Hi and welcome back to the channel. So going into this race weekend, the predicted weather was rain and as mentioned in my weekend preview, the format for this weekend will be different due to the F1 sprint. So this is what happened over the weekend. FP1 was the first time we saw these brand new 2022 cars out in the rain and drivers were struggling to get to grips with these wet conditions as numerous drivers were spinning out due to finding no grip on the track but that didn't stop Ferrari going on their good form of being at the top they finished the first session in FP1, P1 and P2 they were followed by a good showing by Haas who managed to finish their cars in P4 and P5 this is how FP1 ended so we of course went straight into qualifying as per this new format for this weekend. It was a chaotic session with five red flags and a bit of an anti-climax at the end, but it was Max who took pole for the sprint race on Saturday. The qualifying session was full of stories up and down the grid. The track was forever changing going from slicks to wet tyres as the teams and drivers had to be out on track at the right time. Alex Albon caused the first red flag after his brake exploded. It caught fire and exploded the tyre in Q1. He made it back to the pit but he took no further action in qualifying and he started last in the sprint race. The track was drying and the times were coming down but joining Alex Alban out in Q1 was both Alfa Tauri's Latifi and Ocon. It was very surprising to see the Alfa Tauris out in Q1 as they usually have the pace alongside Alpine with Ocon through to Q2. So I feel like the drivers, those drivers who were out in Q1 were caught because of the wet conditions and they weren't really happy about it when they did the interviews after as well. So yeah, one to watch out for in terms of when we have wet races, drivers obviously misinterpreting when they should be out on the track as being out on the track at the right time is very important in terms of where you start and obviously in changing conditions. Q2 is where we saw the second red flag called by science he put a quick time in for p2 but then binned it and hit the wall he lost the rear of the car and he crashed out not what he wanted after signing a new extension with ferrari for two more years this brought out the second red flag as i mentioned and in the drop zone at the time was both mercedes schumacher joe and sonoda as they were clearing science's car the rain started to fall that meant the drivers who were at the bottom five were out unfortunately they couldn't improve the time as the rain fell down and the first time was the best time they could do and this was the first time since the japanese grand prix in 2012 that both mercedes drivers didn't make it through to q3 but yeah they got caught out by of course the rain as well as you know the pace in the car just isn't there q3 is where we saw magnuson in the gravel trap as he touched a white line but he did manage to keep it out of the wall he managed to keep it going again and make it back to the pits but the session was red flagged again drivers then came out to improve their time when the session restarted leclerc went top and then max was in p2 max was then on another push lap and managed to go faster but during his lap he did get a yellow flag as bottas has stopped out on track but there was evidence that he slowed down enough to obviously make sure that lap counted. The session then restarted with only three minutes to go and when drivers were on the out lap to try to get prepared for their push lap, Norris unfortunately put it in the gravel as well. He beached his car and that meant the end of qualifying. That meant that the drivers couldn't improve for a final run and the starting order for the grid meant that Max was on pole. He started first for the sprint race on Saturday. It was a manic session as I mentioned and the front row was really no change and no surprise but everyone behind them probably was a surprise in terms of where Lando started, Magnussen as they started P3 and P4 as well as Alonso doing well to start P5. Huge opportunities for those guys to fight for the win and even a podium place into a sprint race. Mercedes had another horrible session as they couldn't get out of Q2 as their car was still poor poising but I feel like this issue was obviously due to the rain and the drying conditions and of course being caught out by science's crash. It was a better session for Vettel and Weekend as he went into Q3 and he started P9 for the sprint. This is the full grid and how they started for the sprint on Saturday. FP2 was used for long runs as drivers understood how their cars would react to full fuel and it was Russell a surprise at the top of the timesheets with McLaren having issues with both their cars as they struggled to get any laps on the board ahead of the sprint race and not what they wanted to prepare for the sprint race as well. Norris had a technical issue with Ricardo having a power unit issue. Bottas also had issues in the Alfa Romeo and he alongside with Ricardo didn't make it out for any timed laps. This is how the session ended. 
So the sprint. Overall, the sprint, in my personal opinion, was good and delivered some good racing and some good battles up and down the grid. And in terms of a replacement for a practice session, I think this does well. And for the future, I'm all for it. Leclerc managed to get a good start and jump Max into P1, but unfortunately, he couldn't hold on to lead as Max saved his tyres to the end and he jumped back past him on lap 20. And he won the first sprint of the year and got maximum points. Max saved his tyres and obviously passed Leclerc at the end as it looked like Red Bull had the faster car and Leclerc and Ferrari had graining issues. Science and Perez had a good recovery drive as they both started out of position due to qualifying. They managed to make their way back up to P3 and P4 respectively. McLaren had a good day as well as they were best of the rest in P5 and P6 to start on Sunday's race. But yet again, it was another good race for the top two drivers as they were fighting for the lead. They fought cleanly and Max managed to pass Leclerc cleanly as well. He left plenty of room for Leclerc to also make sure that he didn't collide with him. If this was 2021 and he was fighting with Lewis, he definitely wouldn't have left that space. Why I believe Max has changed his driving style for 2022 was covered in a previous video I did. I've linked that in the description below if you haven't seen it. Mercedes had another horrible day in Saturday's sprint. They dropped even further back from qualifying as they couldn't make any more places. They couldn't even make it into the top 10 in Saturday's sprint. This is how the top 8 finishes and those that scored points. This is how they lined up for the race on Sunday based on Saturday's sprint race. The race on Sunday was a bit disappointing in my personal opinion. I feel that the drivers were close enough to follow and race but just wasn't able to overtake. Nothing really happened apart from the start and towards the end in terms of Leclerc. But it was Max who took his first Grand Slam of the year and took maximum points over the whole weekend. It was really a Sunday drive for him as he was never under any pressure and he won his second race of the 2022 season. It was a great day for overall for the team as well as Perez came home in P2 for a 1-2 finish. The race started with everyone on intermediate tyres and drivers not knowing when to go on the slicks as teams had kept reporting to the drivers that more rain will come but that rain just never materialized but it took ricardo to take a gamble on lap 17 to go into slicks and after the team saw how fast he was going the drivers then flooded into the pit lane and pit stops to obviously go on the slick tires the reason that ricardo took that race is because he was at the back of the field due to that incident occurred at the start with science he came together with science in lap one it was a horrible sunday for ferrari overall as science was out on lap one due to that collision with ricardo in my personal opinion that was a racing incident and so did the stewards as they didn't give no penalty to Ricardo. They just came together on lap one and obviously, you know, the space just wasn't there and just unfortunately collided. And then on the other side of the garage for Leclerc, he tried to pit for the fastest lap. He changed for tyres and in his eagerness to try catch Perez, he unfortunately put it in the wall. He caught the curb and crashed out. But because he went side on, he didn't cause that much damage and carried on. But he did have to pit for a new nose and unfortunately came out in P8. He did well to make up two more places to finish P6. But yeah, a very bad weekend for the team for their first home race of this year. It was a great race from all the drivers from P3 to P10 and of course exception of Leclerc. All the drivers that scored points deserved the points that they scored. They all drove well with Lando getting a podium for another season. Season. He really drives a lonely race but was there to obviously you know pick up the places and obviously when Leclerc spun he managed to jump in for that P3. He was at the right place in the right time and obviously punching in the good laps and of course managed to finish P3 for another podium. Russell did a solid race again for another P4 finish and he managed to hold off Bottas who was in P5. This means that Russell is the only driver to finish in the top 5 in all races so far. Very consistent with a car that's not really fast. Yuki Tsunoda also had a good race to come home in P7 as well as Aston Martin for a double points finish. It was really a shambles for Lewis side of the garage in terms of Mercedes. He finished P13 and got stuck behind Gasly for the whole race. He just couldn't pass him and when he did have a DRS he just couldn't get close enough for a pass. But one thing for sure the DRS did play a big part in him not getting passed. I feel like if it was activated earlier he could have passed maybe earlier. At the same time you know if Leclerc had it he could have passed Perez as well. But I'm not sure why the race director took so long to activate that. And this is why I feel like the race wasn't really as good as it could have been. This is how the race was classified. So as usual, time for the driver ratings. I've given Hamilton a 2, really a horrible weekend for him. 2 was really generous after what George could do in that Mercedes and he really needs to pick himself up as he struggles to get to grips with that car. I've given George a 7 and another good race for him. He did well to hold on to P4 and obviously with that car that's struggling, he does well to finish in good points positions and he's done very well so far to beat Hamilton as well. I've given Max a 8, good sprint and a race. Really a Sunday drive for him as I mentioned before and obviously maximum points. I've given Perez an 8 as well. He did well to 
to obviously pass Leclerc when he got jumped at the pit stop and obviously come home for that 1-2 finish for the team. I've given Charles a 5. He didn't do that well in the sprint as he couldn't hold him to that first position and he was pushing too hard to try past Perez and obviously then spun out. Damage limitation for him as he came home in P6 after you know coming back out in P8 after that pit stop but it should have been a P3 as a minimum. I've given Sainz a 6. I've given him a 6 due to his sprint race. He made up the most places out of the grid and did well to obviously get back up to the top and of course no fault of his own he got spun by Ricardo and obviously ended his race on Sunday on lap 1. I've given Lando a 9. A great weekend for him and another podium. It was really a lonely race as I mentioned before but obviously he was punching in the laps and obviously staying to his lap times and of course he was there at the right time to obviously take P3 off Leclerc. Good points and a podium for the team that obviously was nowhere in the first race of the season. I've given Daniel a 4. He obviously had that collision with Sainz early on and he just couldn't make his way back through the field so yeah another really difficult day for him as he was at the back of the field. I've given Alonso a 4. I've given him a 4 because of his sprint race but during the Sunday's race he unfortunately had to retire. He got touched by Mick and unfortunately he lost his side pod and it was damaged and he had to retire the car. I've given Ocon a 2. The only Alpine in the race and didn't do any better than Alonso and he managed to only finish P14. I've given Lance a 5. P10 and a points finish for him and the team. I've given Vettel a 6. Good weekend for him as he scores the double points finish for the team and did well for obviously you know having a good and clean race. I've given Mick a 5. He had a good sprint and managed to start the race in P10 but unfortunately he just dropped back and he spun as well a few times and he came home in P17. He's really struggling to get the most out of that car and he doesn't seem to be getting the pace out of the car that Kevin can do. It's really worrying for him as I'm not seeing the driver that he's supposed to be so yeah he really needs to pick up his pace and form. I've given Kevin a 7. The car just didn't have the pace all weekend but he did well to obviously stay in the top 10. He was dropping back down the order but did come home in P8. I've given Gasly a 5. He did well to keep Hamilton behind him the whole race basically but because they were basically at the back and fighting for no points it was basically a no fight basically as they both scored no points. I've given Sonoda a a great race as good overtakes made him go from P12 to P7. This is probably the first race I've seen Sonoda race really well. Really good for him and his confidence. I've given Bottas a 8. Great race as he was pushing down to try to get P4 but unfortunately he just couldn't pass George and came home in P5 for good points. I've given Joe a 5. Good race and he was very consistent to finish the race but unfortunately he came home in P15. I've given Williams a 5. Nothing exciting for the team as they finished towards the back. Latifi finished towards the back with Albon finishing P11 and just missing out on the points. So my drivers of the weekend are Norris, Russell, Bottas and Sonoda. As I mentioned during my driver rating, Norris did well to obviously you know be there at the right time. Russell did well to start from P11 to P4 and of course managed to hold off Bottas who obviously came home in P5. And again a good overtakes from Sonoda to finish P7. This is how the drivers championship looks like. Both Red Bull drivers now move up as they get closer to Leclerc out in front. This is how the team's championship looks like. Red Bull jumped Mercedes into P2 after that 1-2 finish. Aston Martin double points finish means that they are now in P9 and every team have now scored a point this year. Next up F1 goes to Miami in two weeks time for the first debut race in the US in Miami. It should be a very party atmosphere when we get there but it wasn't all smooth sailing going into that race weekend as there were some court decisions that could have mean that they had to cancel the race. I'll explain fully what this meant and obviously the court decision in my race preview leading up to that weekend so make sure you click the subscribe button below to make sure you're informed when I upload that video. Make sure you click the like button below as well if you've liked the video. This will really help the YouTube algorithm.